So hopefully you've written the methods in player, the get and the set for each of the four fields and also the two string method. Uh, what I'm going to do is run some test code. Now, the file I'm looking in is the main file that was created with your project, Lab6 Blackjack. It should be the one named after your package and after your project. And I want to write this inside public static void main. So I don't want the game to run yet. I want to make a player and test it out. So I'm going to write a method called test stuff. Test stuff doesn't exist yet, but create method test stuff. Okay. Now I don't want the game to run after this. So there's a few ways to accomplish that. One of them would be to comment those lines out. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, you could also system dot uh, exit zero. All right, that's another way to exit. Uh, if you just put a return, they'll complain, NetBeans will complain that there's unreachable code below it. Right here, unreachable statement. However, when you exit, for some reason, it does not consider what's below exiting unreachable code. I'm not exactly sure why, because it won't reach this code, but that's okay. When you're ready to get back to testing the game, all you have to do is just comment out that right there, and then you will... Uh, create a new game object and call the play game method. All right, let's test some stuff. I want to make sure that this actually runs before I spend some time here. All right, it looks like it's not running. So it looks like my, yeah, why is that? Because <laughs> I was talking instead of concentrating. I'm going to uncomment this. Now it'll run the test stuff method and then exit and I shouldn't see any of the game. Hey, all right, excellent. So let's build a player. I'm gonna call it one. Let me go call it P, it doesn't matter. I'll just call it one new player. Now I do need to give it a name. I'm gonna call it the dude. And if I don't put an integer here, it's gonna set the initial money to negative uh, one. So let's give the dude a lot of money and we're going to print the player. This is going to call, remember, the toString method by default. So I'm going to hit play. And don't worry about the bet. The bet should just be that initial value. We didn't uh, run any bet code yet. Uh, you should see, the, however, the money. You don't need to put your dollar sign at the end, but I personally hate dollar signs at the front because it's the only unit that we uh, right at the front. Uh, if you have a thousand feet, you don't write feet 1000, you write 1000 feet at the end. So I always put the dollar sign at the end. All right, what is this? The zero is the total of the cards in the player's hand. The player has no cards, so they add up to nothing, also known as zero. All right, let's give the player some cards. Normally, we're not giving the player cards like this. So I do need to get hand. That's how you actually interact with the cards. Now, these are all the methods from hand. And we can just use the add card method. Now, I need to put a card in here. New card. And I got a rank and a suit. So we'll go with a five comma zero should work. And then let's duplicate this and run it. I had to duplicate the uh, print statement so I can see what it is after I've placed a five in the hand. All right, so it looks good. I'm really testing the, of course I'm testing the two string method, but I'm also very carefully looking at the total and making sure that the total is actually the total of the cards in the hand. All right, let's add, let's get crazy and add that's 11, like a queen, jack. Yeah, it'll be a jack of, uh, don't go past three. Three's the last uh, suit you can use. And notice, because I commented, or I didn't comment out, but I'm not running the game, so this test code runs super quickly. 
And that's one thing you want to make sure is while you're testing it out, you're not wasting time typing in your name every time and things like that. All right, so it's looking good. Let's do this one more time. Uh, let's add, you can add whatever you want, whatever card you want. Make sure it's going to be a valid card, obviously, but should be able to add any card. There we go. And now you see 25. Now that's going to be a bust, uh, but all that total tells you, total returns an integer, and the integer value of your hand is 25. Now in your code, inside a game, that's where you're going to have to deal with what 25 means. But for now, 25 is great. It's the sum of all the cards in your hand. All right, we also should have written the bet method. So let's go and test that out as well. So the player's called one. So there's a set bet. Remember, there's no checks on the value in here. So I could do something crazy like that and run it. So it's just the last one I want to look at. So the bet was negative one, and now the bet is that much. Now I notice my money didn't change. That's not good. You need to subtract the bet value from the money. Uh, let's put a reasonable bet in, like 20. All right, what I should see, 20 is the bet, but this money should be 1,000 minus 20. So it should be 980. So you need to make sure in the set bet method that you're adjusting the money. So how do we get to the set bet method? You have a lot of methods, a lot of code all over the place, and I know it can be overwhelming. I would recommend try not to have more than three open. Most of the work you're going to do is in player and game. So make sure you have player and game open. And I'm only messing around in the main method now to make sure player is fully functional. Once I have player fully functional, I'm going to comment this out. I may not really come back hardly at all to uh, this method here. So I can close when I feel good about the player working. I'm going to close this lab six blackjack file and not open it unless I have to later. All right. So how do I get to this method? So I'm gonna right click and there's navigate, go to declaration, control B. So I'm gonna click control B. It takes me to the set bet method. Now, how would I go back to where I came from? If you right click navigate, if you go to declaration again, it's gonna go right to here. It also made a beep that you probably couldn't hear, but it will go right to here because this is where it's declared or defined. If you want to go to where it is used, you right click and find usages, Alt F7. Now make sure my scope was not set to current project. It was set, I think, to like all projects or all, oh my God. It, sorry. It was uh, set not to current project, but all projects. And you don't really want to do that because you're going to have a lot of overlap in Let's see, like there's a hand that also is in the chapter 14. There's a, a deck that's in chapter 14. And so you really want to limit the scope to the current project. Uh, I don't know, mine's opening over here. But anyways, you don't want to do open projects and dependencies. I just did current project right there. So it only searches in the current project. And then you see... There's two places set bet is used. One of them is in lab six blackjack.java. So if you double click, it goes to the exact line where it's used and it uh, appears a second time, double click it. And this is where we set bet uh, in a couple of videos ago inside of the get bet method. So this is inside of game. And the other one is inside of lab six blackjack.java. And if you want to go back to the definition, control B or navigate to declaration. So that's a nice way to get around, but we go to a method definition versus when you're using the method. And as you get bigger files, more code, it's going to be harder to remember, oh yeah, it was in line, whatever, 410. Uh, 
It's going to be much easier to navigate by right-clicking navigate, go to declaration, or find usages.